I did more fundraisers for APAC in the 70s and early 80s than uh, just about as many as anybody. It was incorporated in 1963. For 10 years prior to that, it was known as the American Zionist Committee for Public Affairs. If I know APAC as well as I think I do, I don't think there's any senator who's ever done more fundraisers for APAC or gone around the country more for APAC. Lobby. And according to its website, it has over 3 million members across the country in regional chapters working to, quote, expand and strengthen the U.S.-Israel relationship, end quote. You may know APAC as being one of the biggest and most recognizable donors to many of the members of Congress in your state. My father pointed out to me, I did not need to be a Jew to be a Zionist, for I am. Israel is essential to the security of Jews worldwide. Before 2021, APAC did not endorse candidates nor give political contributions. Its focus was on lobbying elected officials, not actually electing officials. But in a dramatic shift in policy, APAC began directly funding candidates and spending big on races in 2021. There's no apology to be made. None. It is the best $3 billion investment we make. Were there not an Israel, the United States of America would have to invent an Israel to protect her interest in the region. I say again, to APEC, it donated money to 365 candidates from both parties, including every single member of both Democratic and Republican leadership in Congress. 109 Republicans who voted against the certification of the 2020 presidential election in America received campaign contributions from APAC. All in all, APAC gave money to 342 members of the 118th Congress. The 2022 elections were the most expensive midterms in American history, with a total cost of $8.9 billion spent. I say again, you need not be a Jew to be a Zionist. You know, I used to say, early on when I was a kid, I'd say, when I was a young senator, I'd say, if I were a Jew, I'd be a Zionist. I am a Zionist. You don't have to be a Jew to be a Zionist. Israel. Now, let's take a look at who benefits from APAC's largesse. Here are the top 20 recipients in Congress, the House and the Senate, of APEC money in the 2022 midterm cycle, according to Open Secrets. They're members of both parties. They come from every corner of the country with varying levels of experience in Congress. The Democrat Glenn Ivey of Maryland tops the list. He beat out fellow Democrat Donna Edwards in Maryland's House primary after APEC poured millions into pro-Ivey advertisements and mailers. Edwards was running for a second stint in Congress after serving during the Obama administration, where she voted present, not even a no, on a number of pro-Israel resolutions. So the money poured in against her. Not even an endorsement from Nancy Pelosi could save her. Michigan Democrat Haley Stevens unseated Democratic Representative Andy Levin. Here's what Levin had to say about that. I'm really Jewish, <laughs> but uh, <laughs> APAC uh, can't stand the idea that I am the clearest, strongest Jewish voice in Congress standing for a simple proposition that there's no way to have a secure democratic homeland for the Jewish people unless we achieve the political and human rights of the Palestinian people. APAC spent four million dollars against Levin. He lost by 20 points. Israel. Israel is the single greatest strength America has in the Middle East. I always say to my friends when they say those things to you, I say, imagine our circumstance in the world. Were there no Israel? How many battleships would there be? How many troops would be stationed? When Michigan Congresswoman Rashida Tlaib, the only Palestinian American in Congress, was censured by the House in early November over what some lawmakers called her rhetoric around the Israeli-Hamas war, 22 Democrats joined Republicans in that censure vote. 18 of those Democrats received campaign funds from APAC in 2022, totaling more than $1.1 million. By the way, for these six of them, APAC was their top contributor. Progress occurs in the Middle East when everyone knows there's simply no space between the United States and Israel. There is no space between the United States and Israel when it comes to Israel's security. The security of Israel and the United States is inextricably tied. And we will never, ever, ever abandon Israel out of our own self-interest.
growing list of progressive lawmakers who are vocal in their criticism of the government of Israel and its policies and their support for Palestinian self-determination have inspired AIPAC to spend even more. As progressive lawmakers began calling for an immediate ceasefire in Gaza, Slate reported that insiders expect AIPAC's 2024 spending to hit $100 million. In Israel's fact, legitimacy and our support for it is not a matter of debate. In fact, United Democracy Project, which is a pro-Israel super PAC affiliated with AIPAC, is already spending money on attack ads against Democratic Representatives Jamal Bowman of New York and Summer Lee of Pennsylvania. Lee has already got a primary challenger, as do Cori Bush and Ilhan Omar. Pro-Israel donors have already signaled that they are eager to primary Rashida Tlaib and Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez. It is not a matter of debate. Don't raise it with us. Do not raise it with us. It is not negotiable. Look at this. A foreign government is bragging that they have a 98% success rate in picking our politicians for us. That's a screenshot from their own website, APEC.org. Our government ignores all protests, ignores the voters, ignores everybody. But this foreign government has a 98% success rate in picking our politicians. Democracy is just an illusion. Just an illusion. There is no democracy.